welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you've not already, I do encourage you to check out my ebooks. All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo and All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet. These examine the careers and histories of seven fictional detectives and policemen each. Life lessons that can be learned from them. And there's some nice bonus appendices in All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet. The ebooks are available wherever fine ebooks are sold or as audiobooks at audible.com or in the Apple store and you can find all my books audiobooks and ebooks over at store.greatdetectives.net well now it is time for this week's episode of philo vance the original air date april 5th 1949 and the title is the movie murder case <laughs> All right, you know what you have to do now, Art? After the fall from the balcony, we stop the camera and we pan into you lying on the floor, right? Yes, go ahead and shoot the scene. I'll be where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Now, Joe, both right. <laughs> How do you like that guy, Joyce? I've only been in 70 Western movies. In every one of them, there's a scene like this. I don't think Mr. Haney would tell you anything if he wasn't sure there was a reason. You are a little unreliable, you know, Art. Despite what the kids think of you and those 70 Westerns. Well, I'm with friends. I can see that. All right, cut it out, Art. We want to shoot this scene. All right, you two up in the balcony. You start slugging, you wrestle, and both of you fall over the balcony, right? Right. All right. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. 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 All right, now. We can pick both of you guys up on the microphone, so make this good and real. All right, let's make this. Sound? Sounds ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production number one, one, two, five, four, three, six. Take it away. Right. Action. All right, I'm going to go. All right, I'm going to go. He's fine, I tell you. Get away from me. Okay, cut, okay, cut. cut. All right, that was good. That was great. Fine. Well, that stunt man we've got doubling for you really can take falls, can he, Art? That's what he's paid to do, isn't it? Yeah, but everyone doesn't do what he gets paid to do around here. For instance, you're paid to act. Who's writing your dialogue, Ed? Bill Moore? Very funny. Hasn't he got enough trouble with the lines in this picture? It's the worst talk I've ever had to say. Well, I guess this is a typical Art Ingram picture, isn't it? You've griped about everything so far. Your story, your lines, your leading lady. Oh, you're not too bad. Thanks. Tell me, you do think your horse is all right? Sarcasm is catching around this place. What do you say, Ed? Let's get on with the next scene. All right, suits me. All right, places for next scene, everybody. Places. Places. I will run through it once and then shoot it. Let's try to make the first one a take. <laughs> hey, Joyce, look at the way those extras move when Ed yells at them. What a life. Yeah, what a life that double of mine leads. You realize, Joyce, that I was supposed to take that fall from the balcony. I realize it very well. You have no idea how I wish you had taken it. Maybe you wouldn't have gotten up. Partner, put... Down that six shooter, he said. Bill, Bill, are hmm? you busy? Oh no, no, I'm, I'm just banging on this typewriter to keep my fingers limber. What's up, Joycey? Oh, I just came off a set and working with Art Ingram all morning. Yeah, are you really not busy, Bill? I'm doing some last-minute rewrites on tomorrow's <sighs> scene, Joyce. Art was complaining about his lines, and Ed wants to keep peace in the family, so little Billy goes to work. 
You can wait, though. Why do you ask? I'm not complaining, Bill, but I wish you'd write me some smart lines, some things that'll give me a chance to stand out. I've got all I can do to get my face in the camera when I work with art. That bum knows more tricks than a monkey. You're not kidding. I'll do a rewrite on your lines for you, Joyce. Glad to do it. Oh, gee, that's swell. <laughs> Apparently, you don't like him either. What do you mean, either? I don't like him, but I didn't think there was any friction between you two. Well, there is. Tell me something, Bill. What reason do you have for hating art? You really want to know? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you. I had a kid sister in college a couple of years ago. She was terrific. Pretty, had talent, was engaged to the campus hero. Had everything her own way. Mm. What college, Bill? Daniels University. Remember Joe Layton, All-American End? Well... Intercollegiate heavyweight champ, baseball and track star. Mm, I know the name. Well, that was the guy Mary was engaged to. And one day... Art Ingram went up to Daniel's U to shoot some scenes for a picture, and he met my sister. She didn't have sense enough to tell me she'd met him, but she fell all over herself, falling in love with the guy. She quit school, followed him back to the coast, and six months later committed suicide. Oh, no. Oh, uh huh? Yes, with oh. a capital Y. Someday Ingram and I are going to settle up about Mary. I promised myself that a long time ago. Bill. Don't do anything about Art that'll get you in trouble. He isn't worth it. Believe me, he isn't. Don't worry, Joyce. When I do something about Art, it won't get me into any trouble. I guarantee that. Oh, keep those horses quiet, will you, fellas? We don't need them till the next scene. Now get them away so we don't pick them up on this microphone. That's good. All right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Joyce, you know the action in this scene. I'm not in the first part of it. Huh? Art comes galloping up, rides in front of the camera, and then rides off. He's supposed to be chasing the bandits who have me. Fine, all right. One thing that guy can really do is ride. Mm. Quiet, everybody! Quiet! Quiet! Okay, let's make this. Sound! Sound's ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production number 11254, C7. Take it away. Action. <laughs> Holy mackerel, what a thing to happen to me. Ingram's been thrown. Come on, Joe. Yeah. All right, get back. Everybody, get back. I don't touch him. Nobody's touched him. Look at him. He's not moving. Come on, let us through there. Let All us right. through, will you? Ed. Lying pretty still. I'll see in a minute if he's hurt. Hey. Back. He's dead, Joyce. Oh. Looks to me like his neck's broken. Must have landed on it. Ed, look at his hand. What about it? When he rode past us a second ago, that big diamond ring of his was on his finger. I, I saw it. And so did I. You couldn't miss it. Hey, it's not there. And nobody touched the body before we got here. What happened to the ring? I don't know. All I know is what happened to Art Ingram. Like organ music, Vance? I like practically every kind of music, Markham. It's very restful. And so's your driving, by the way. For a district attorney, you drive very well. <laughs> How a district attorney is supposed to drive. Oh, you know, full of fire and fury. <laughs> Always in a hurry to get somewhere. Out of my day off, Vance, and not when accompanied by my favorite of private investigators. Well, thank you. Come to think of it, if I do drive a little faster, we'll make my apartment by dinner time. I have an appointment with Mrs. Markham, and I don't want to be late. Late, Markham. Nothing's either late or early. Time is a convenience that we humans decided upon to facilitate appointments or to make a schedule practical. I never make appointments, and I live by no schedule, so time is relatively meaningless to me. Uh, your remark comes under the same category, my friend. I'm we personally... interrupt this organ concert to bring you a news report. Art Ingram, well-known movie cowboy, was killed in an accident this morning when his horse threw him. That's very unfortunate. Witnesses supply a fantastic angle to the accident. His director and co-star insist that when Ingram rode past the camera a few seconds before his death, a diamond ring was seen on his finger. When he was thrown, without ever being out of their sight, the ring was missing. We return you now to... Why turn off the radio, Vance? I thought you enjoyed the organ concert. There's one thing I enjoy more, Markham. Yes, and I know what it is. It's investigating murders. But apparently Art Ingram wasn't murdered. 
And if he was, you certainly have no way of knowing it. Haven't I? I think otherwise. Now, wait a minute, Vance. Don't tell me that just because that ring is missing, you think Ingram was murdered. The missing ring has nothing to do with it, Markham. They'll find the ring. It probably fell off Mr. Ingram's hand and is in the bushes somewhere. But something proves to me that man was murdered. Markham, your day off is herewith canceled. We're going to work. That's how it happened, Vance. Exactly how it happened. He rode past you and the camera, Miss Payne. Yes. He was leaning over the horse's neck as if to get more speed from him. Then he fell off a few seconds later and landed on his head. And Vance, his neck was broken. That all makes sense. Not to me. Why don't you settle for being half right, Vance? They found the ring just as you said they would. It had fallen off Ingram's hand and was in the bushes at the side of the road. Why do you insist he was murdered? I'll explain that to you, Markham, but not now. Miss Payne. Yes? Did Mr. Ingram have any enemies in this troop? Why don't you ask me if he had any friends? That would be easier to answer. I see what you mean. Are you included in the camp of the enemies? Ingram didn't bother me one way or another. All I can tell you is I didn't like him. But there is somebody here who hated him. Who's that? Bill Moore. He wrote the scenario for the picture we were shooting. Believe me, Vance, he had a reason for seeing Ingram dead. That automatically gives me a reason for seeing him. Markham. Of course, Vance. Mr. Moore, please. Yes? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Come right in here, if you will. Well? Hello, Mr. Moore. Hello. I understand you and Art Ingram didn't get on very well. Who told you that, Joyce? Well, it's true, isn't it? Just because it's true doesn't mean it has to be public property. Okay, Mr. Vance, I hated Art Ingram. What are you going to do about it? Well, I don't know at the moment, young man. But if you did anything about killing him, I promise you I'll do something about that. What am I going to do? I'm going to try and finish the picture, of course. What? No, no, no close-ups. I'll shoot all the scenes that Ingram was supposed to do with his double. Heck, I'll have the most famous back in show business when I'm through. What? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, if there's any more trouble, I'll call you. So long. Mr. Haley, you're going to let me finish the picture? That's right, that's right, Wally. You're going to take Art's place. And we only need you for a couple of scenes. Oh, well, gosh, I'm not sure that I can do that, Mr. Haley. Okay, so you're not sure I am. It's very hard for me to remember more than one thing at a time, Mr. Haley. Yeah, 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 okay. Now, we'll shoot the scenes in pieces. Yeah, but I was... Don't just... worry, will you, Wally? Haven't I got enough problems? With Vance and Markham and a couple of cops lousing up the studio and me trying to get a picture finished, am I going to have trouble with you, too? Oh, no, 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 sir, Mr. Haley, I don't give anybody any trouble, only I'm really a stuntman, not an actor. I know, I know, now will you stop worrying, leave that to me. Now, you'll be on a set ready to work at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, this is great, this is fine, I start out shooting a cowboy picture and I wind up making a murder mystery. Vance, are you in there? Come in. Come in, Markham. I'm using the director's office for my own temporarily. I need some place to concentrate while I'm correlating my findings on this movie murder case. And what are your findings, Vance? Well, I've questioned everybody in sight, Markham. That includes the director, Ed Haley, Ingram's co-star, Joyce Payne, the writer, Bill Moore, and Ingram's double, Wally Douglas. Uh But if I add up what I found out from all of them combined, I'd still have nothing. That Douglas interests me, though. Ingram's double? Mm Mm-hmm. Is it your idea that he killed Ingram thinking he could take the star's place? Hardly. He's no actor and he knows it. He's an ex-pugilist, Markham. He's beaten up pretty badly in the ring, I understand. Of course, that's not unusual. Uh, Vance, let's understand each other. Both of us are working on this case. Neither of us, apparently, has made any headway. But you do know something that I don't. So let's start from there, shall we? You want to know how I knew it was murder. Is that it, Markham? It most certainly is. Well, that's reasonably simple. How many Art Ingram pictures have you seen? Oh, few, I guess. I don't know actually why. You remember the scenes where he rides horseback? Of course, he was an excellent rider. Oh, now I get it. You've built a whole murder theory on the premise that a rider as good as Ingram wouldn't slip off his horse. (laughs) Now, Vance. That reproachful tone would be used correctly if that was what I built my theory on. But it isn't, Markham. I've seen a dozen Ingram pictures. In every one of them, he rode horseback, and in every one of them, he wore gloves when he rode. That's not unusual. Most cowboy stars, maybe all of them wear gloves when they're riding. That is exactly why I knew Ingram was murdered. His director and co-star saw the ring on his finger when he rode past them, remember? Uh, If the ring was seen on his finger, he couldn't have been wearing gloves. 
Yet he always wore gloves when he got on a horse. Now, what's the answer, Marvin? Oh. Oh, he didn't get on the horse. He was put on after he was dead. You're right. His killer figured out a way to make it look like an accident. Now I've got to think of a way to figure out the killer. This is District Attorney Markham. The movie murder case began when Art Ingram, cowboy star, was thrown from his horse. But Philo Vance reasoned that what looked like an accident was actually murder. Suspects include Ingram's director, his co-star, and a scriptwriter, Bill Moore, although Vance finds Wally Douglas, stuntman, an interesting character. In an effort to finish the picture, director Ed Haley is shooting an outdoor scene with Wally Douglas acting as Ingram. Vance and I are interested spectators. It is the power... You'll be interested in this, Markham, Vance. Now, in a scene... The hero rides right past us. He doesn't know the bridge up ahead is washed out. He's heading for sure destruction when the heroine, that's Joyce, the heroine rides up in back of him and lassos him. While both of them are riding at top speed? Well, in a Western movie, nobody ever rides any other way. <laughs> uh, we've rehearsed this scene several times and we're ready to shoot it. Miss Payne actually lassos Wally Douglas. Oh, yes, yeah, she's very good with the rope. You watch and see. Okay, here we go, everybody. Miss Payne, ready? Ready. Wally Douglas? Okay. All right, let's make this. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, quiet. Quiet. No sound. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production number 11254C7. Are you awake? Action. Okay, Joyce, now throw that lasso. Throw it, throw it. All right, cut, cut. All right, that's it. Print that one. We'll dub in the sound later. That young lady is very good with the rope, isn't she, Mr. Haley? Joyce, she's sensational. Terrific. Why? Yes, Vance, why? No reason. Must there be a reason for everything I say, Markham? No, but there generally is, isn't there? <laughs> doing in my dressing room? I'm here to take care of you, Joyce. That's what I'm here for. I didn't have a chance before this to really show you how I feel about you telling Vance about me and Art Ingram. He'd have found out anyhow, Billy. Vance would have found a way of... of... That's nothing to what I'm going to do to you, kid. Maybe this will teach you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't get away with slapping me, you two-bit no talent. My God, hair. Big... Let go of my you hair. Gonna teach you were going to me, you? I'll show you. Somebody's at the door. You... That's quick. That's quick. I... Who's there? It's I, Philo Vance. May I come in? Come on. Oh, uh, hi, Vance. Joyce and I were just running over a scene. Yes, I heard part of it from outside. Scene is quite the word. You uh, want to know what happened in here, don't you, Vance? I'd hate to think I couldn't guess. Actually, I came looking for you, Mr. Moore. I've just found out the reason you hated Art Ingram. You found out about my sister. That's right. I could have saved you a lot of trouble, Vance. After the way this guy busted in on me, believe me, I'd have told you all the details myself. Your sister was very young, very pretty, engaged to the campus hero. Four-letter man, is that right, Moore? That's right. She killed herself a few months after she left college to follow the late Mr. Ingram. You didn't want me to know about that, did you, Moore? No, but not for any reason that you think. I didn't want you to know because I didn't want that story dragged out again. Is that wrong? Not if that was the reason. I told you it was. Miss Payne. Yes? I watched you lasso Mr. Ingram's double this morning. You're quite strong. What about it? Well, somebody, whoever killed Ingram, had to boost him up to his saddle after he was dead. To tell you the truth, I didn't suspect you at first because you're a girl. Well? To continue telling you the truth, that fact doesn't continue to keep you off my list of suspects. Sit here next to me on this crane, Vance. And when we begin shooting, it'll swing up and out and come right over the action. This is very interesting, Mr. Haley. Thank you very much. What happens in this scene? Well, it's a mountain cabin, see? The hero walks in, finds one of the cattle rustlers guarding the girl, and knocks him out. We'll use Wally Douglas, of course, but he's been instructed to keep his back to the camera. I hope he can remember a simple thing like that. Douglas has approximately the same build as the late Mr. Ingram. Just about. Okay, everybody. Quiet. Quiet. 
Okay, let's make this. Sound. Sounds ready. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Production one one two five four. Scene four seven. Anyway, action. So. Look out, Art. He's got a gun. Uh, well, if he has, he won't get a chance to use it. I... Oh, thank goodness you've got it here, darling. Please put your arms around me. You deserve it, you know. After all, you were the victor. The victor? Well, to, to the victor? Uh, victor over the verdant field. Hot! Hot! Hold on, everybody. What was wrong, Mr. Haley? You'll hear in a second, Matt. Oh, Wally... Wally Douglas, your line is supposed to be, to the victor belongs the spoils. What happened to it, Wally? Oh, gosh. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Haley. I, I, I just couldn't remember it. Oh, where'd you get the line you did remember? I, I don't know. It just came to me. Well, tell it to go away and not come around anymore. We don't want it. Yes, sir. All right. Let's make the whole scene over again. Places, everybody. Oh, Wally. Yes, Mr. Haley. Will you please remember your lines and keep your back to the camera? Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, yo, Pete, get off the floor. Well, I have to take another poke in the jaw for Wally. He hit like a mule. Well, fake that punch, will you, Wally? You almost broke Pete's jaw. I'm sorry, Mr. Haley. I forget things. Yeah, yeah, I know. Places, everybody. Places, everybody. All right, let's do this again. Make it right this time. Uh, excuse me, please, Mr. Haley, but do you mind if I leave? Why, no, no, not at all. Uh, is this getting boring, Vance? On the contrary, it's very interesting. In fact, I might almost say revealing. <laughs> You might at least tell me what you're looking up, Vance. I will in a moment, Markham. Now, here it is. The quotation is from Pope. Victor over the verdant field. Hmm. Whatever that means. It means a great deal to me, Markham. And it's going to mean a great deal more, I believe, after I make a long-distance phone call. Listen and listen close. Huh? I know it's 3.30 in the morning, but I couldn't call before because I've been watched. I know you killed Art Ingram, huh? but I hated him too. Hated him enough to give you a chance to get away. You see, Philo Vance knows you killed Art. Huh? Don't ask me how. He knows it, that's all. There's a train out of here at 5 o'clock that gives you an hour and a half to get packed, blow, and remember me in your dreams. Oh, yeah. So long. How did I do, Vance? Very well, Miss Payne, very well. You see, I'm quite certain that you just spoke to Mr. Ingram's murderer. Now, Mr. Markham and I are going to get the proof we need. You know, I haven't been up this late or this early in years, Vance. It is almost 4.30 in the morning, isn't it, Markham? And our man hasn't shown up yet. The train should be here in a few minutes, and so should he. In fact, look... Vance. It's very dark, Markham, but isn't that a shadow over there by the station platform? I don't see. Yes, yes, it is. It is, Vance. It's a man. It's more than a man, Markham. It's our man. Better get in back of him in case there's trouble. Got a gun, Markham? Yes. Keep it handy. I'm going right up to him. Hello there. Huh? Going somewhere? Oh. Oh, it's you, Vance. Oh, so the tip was straight. You did know it was me, didn't you? Well, you're a sucker for trying to take me, Vance, because I'm going to... Boo! <laughs> I'm glad you did that, Markham. Very happy indeed that you knocked him out. If I hadn't, he most certainly would have knocked you out, Vance. He was just about to. And now, if I'm not too inquisitive, uh, who is he? Use your flashlight, Markham. I know you'll want to get a look at our murdering friend. I don't have my flashlight, and it's too dark to see. In that case, I'll enlighten you. The murderer of Art Ingram, Markham, was his own double, Wally Douglas. <laughs> You know, Markham, I've never done anything quite like this before. You mean sitting in a private projection room and seeing yourself on the screen? That's right. 
I asked you to have a film and recording made of your explanation of the movie murder case so that we'd have it for our home vans. Mrs. Markham and I have a new 16-millimeter projector, and Mr. Haley practically begged to be allowed to shoot this for us. I'll know whether I'm indebted to him or not as soon as I see what I look like <laughs> and hear what I sound like. <laughs> Please don't forget I'm in the picture, too. Vance. Ready to begin any time, Mr. Vance. Well, that might as well be now. Good enough. Lights out. Here we go. Markham, you wanted to know why Wally Douglas killed Art Ingram and how I knew it was he who had done it. That's right, man. Well, to begin with, I was watching a fight scene being photographed when I saw Mr. Douglas knock out one of the actors with a powerful right hand. His entire appearance indicated he had been a professional fighter, and that blow proved it. That still doesn't tie him up with the Ingram murder. No, but he made a curious speech when he had knocked out the man. He said something about the victor and verdant fields. I remember when that puzzled me. That was a very learned quotation to be used by an ex-pug. In fact, I had to look it up to find that it was written by Alexander Pope. That suggested to you, then, that Wally the Douglas, the double, had been right? well-educated. Oh, no, Reasonably well, at any rate. There was no question but that the beatings he had taken in the prize ring had affected his mind a bit. Pathetic but it still functioned to an extent where he remembered certain incidents and lines from his past. Uh, that long-distance phone call you made. Well, that really what was it made to? Daniels University. I wanted a description of the four-letter athlete who had been the fiancé of the girl who killed herself over Ingram. You mean the you sister of Bill Moore, the writer? Yeah, I Correct. Wonder. I got the description, Markham, and also found that the fiancé had majored in English and that Alexander Pope was one of his favorite authors. It seems that after his fiancé's death, he left college, went into the ring, and quit after absorbing terrific punishment. After that, he lived only to get revenge on the man who took the girl he loved from him. That's it, Mr. Vance. You figured out his murder scheme, Vance, just because he forgot to put gloves on Ingram's hands before boosting him onto his horse. That was the beginning of our activities, Markham. And now, this is the end of the movie murder case. Welcome back. Okay, I think the most uniquely odd thing about Philo Vance is the making of videos of Philo Vance's audio in a radio drama. And I'm wondering why District Attorney Markham and his wife would want a home movie of Philo Vance explaining a murder case. Unless maybe it was to get rid of unwanted guests. Mrs. Markham says... Honey, we just can't get rid of these people. They won't take a hint. Well, let me try something. Hey, I'm going to get out the projector, and we're going to watch a echoey film of Philo Vance explaining how he cleverly solved a murder. You guys would be like, oh, look at the time. And speaking of time, that whole quote just before and Markham found out about the murder sounds like it might have come from a Philo Vance book. I've only read two of them, so I can't say for sure one way or another, but it certainly sounds like something that Vance might have said in the books. Listener comments and feedback now, and we turn to something rare for our Instagram account. And that is a legitimate, actual question, not a bot trying to promote a uh, Instagram promotion service. This comes from Britain Media, who asks, what is your favorite thing about podcasting? Well, that is a good question. 
Yes, there are a few things. My top thing is those moments where I read a comment that indicates the podcast has really helped people in some way or another. Uh, yeah, we've been doing this for, you know, 15 years total, uh, nearly 13 years on this particular podcast. And there are a lot of ups and downs. And you get a comment from someone about how the podcast has helped them get through difficult times, or been a comfort to them, or reminded them of someone they used to listen to these old-time radio programs with. And it really makes it worth it, regardless of of the, you know, struggle you might be having with the podcast host or with advertising or with any of those little administrative aches and pains that come along with running a podcast. Those moments are absolute gold and they mean so much to me. But obviously that's not something that you know, you can control. You may get comments. You may not. So other things that I can somewhat control, my favorite things are listening to the programs and learning about them. Then being able to share what I've learned with you guys. I've had a really unique experience when I started out as uh, doing old time radio podcast. I was really not an expert. I wouldn't say I knew nothing, but I knew next to nothing. And over the various seasons that I've been doing this, I've learned. I've learned about uh, what the history of collecting, the history of the various sorts of medium that old-time radio programs have been on. So I've kind of learned with uh, people in the uh, show's audience. I have no idea if you could today start a podcast about something that you don't know anything about but are curious about, as opposed to something where you're an expert on. Or whether the time when I first started was kind of, you know, was just kind of this brief respite. But I started out not knowing a whole lot and have really got to learn a lot along the way. So thanks so much for the question. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Scott, Patreon supporter since June of 2016, currently supporting us at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for the support, Scott. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. Next Thursday, we'll be back with another episode of Philo Vance. But coming up tomorrow, uh, listen in for an episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, where... Come in, come in. Have a seat. Thanks, Dr. Howell. Well, your company acts fast. Only mailed that claim day before yesterday. National Medical feels it's an unusually high claim, You're Doctor. suggesting I padded it? Oh, certainly not. But a team of neurosurgeons flown down from it Boston... It was necessary to save the boy's life, I assure you. Well, don't misunderstand, Doctor. National Medical isn't challenging your professional opinion. Mm, I should hope not. The reports you attached is what interested my company. It should. It should interest the whole country. I didn't have the opportunity to read it, Doctor. Perhaps it's a potential just... child killer, Mr. Dollar. A vicious, unscrupulous racket, capitalizing on panic, fear. Well, come with me. I want you to see what they've done to an innocent child. Bobby Foster? Yes. Any change, nurse? No, doctor. Well, there he is, Mr. Dollar. A five-year-old boy, victim of a panic-stricken parent and a criminal operator. What are his chances? We won't know until he comes out of coma, if he does. And then? For complete recovery, no chance. For partial recovery, a fair chance. Bobby Foster will be paralyzed. You said a criminal operator. Who? Who? If I knew, Mr. Dollar, I wouldn't bother with reports to insurance companies. I've been a doctor 40 years now. Seen a lot of pain and tragedy. But this... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. 
Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.